Return to Horror High is a 1987 slasher comedy directed by Bill Froelich and starring Lori Latton, Brendan Hughes, Scott Jacoby, Richard Brestoff, Maureen McCormick, Pepper Martin, Al Fan, Andy Romano, and Alex Rocco. Here's some backstory. So witty. The film opens at Crippen High School, and I'm not sure if this is real or fake. Chief Diner and Officer Tyler examine this freshly fertilized yard and question Arthur. We were just making a movie. A movie? There are seven or eight. or eight corpses laying out there. The hell kind of a movie was it? Arthur has a flashback to the shoot with Officer Blake arriving as a technical advisor. Hey Josh, I yeah. got the lead in the yeah, series. The hey, that's great. What is it? Oh, it's an action adventure with some humor. Yeah, he got a Batman. Alex Rocco. Here's some gratuitous nudity. Okay, look, at least let me tear the nipple off. Jesus, think of the audience. Then it's revealed that Harry canceled their hotel rooms and everyone will be staying in the former school slash crime scene. You're going to turn this into an asylum, Harry. Josh, it's nostalgia. Did you ever want to go back to high school, see what it'd be like? Oliver is ditching this bitch, and Harry isn't okay. too happy about it. I hope they cancel your series, Oliver. Scumface. There's a moment of exposition where we learn that the murderer was never caught, and then they throw even more characters at us. Oliver heads out, and this is an odd door for a high school. Don't go in there! And down goes Clooney. Clooney's loss is Blake's gain, and he is now cast in the movie playing himself. Mop, mop, mop. All day long. Blake runs into Amos, who is the real custodian, and they shoot the shit with Amos revealing his master plan. I'm gonna do some of them pussy films. <laughs> Pornos! The American Dream. Collie meets Principal Castleman to find out what her character was like, and he's kind of a weird dude. Eyeballs. Eyeballs. Dangling from strings. Staring at me. Right there. <laughs> Holy shit! You jerk! Me! Farley asks Collie out on a date, but gets denied. Then he barges into the locker room, threatening to kidnap this woman if he doesn't get a date. Huh? She agrees and they go to the point where some scumbag moves are put on. Hey, listen, I just spent seventeen fifty plus tip on dinner. What the fuck? Now I gotta show you what seventeen fifty plus tip is worth. <laughs> now you're gonna see me score right between the uprights. This is getting a little Weinstein-y. Why are women always the ones to be exploited? What is it with you guys? Hey, I'm having a great time. So you're having a great time playing a rapist. People Callie is pissed them. off about this exploitation and talks to Harry about it, but he doesn't give two fucks. What the fuck is she talking about? Here's another death. Blake and Collie have a minute of apprehension, and hey, here's my old locker. Look again. Look. Steve and Kathy. I'm sure we're going to find out who Kathy is. What the hell? Magic! Why is there a fucking sandbox in the middle of this room? Oh. Farley shows up, but winds up getting caught in some of Paul's wilderness bullshit. Then he meets a huge fan. <laughs> this is some pretty intricate shit, proving that sometimes less is more. Elsewhere, Blake and Collie roam the fog-draped school and we get the backstory about Kathy. We slept together that night. Then she went away to her grandparents' place for a summer vacation. She was knocked up. I didn't sleep with another girl for three years after that. 
Oh, I'm sure that has nothing to do with your personality. Let's set up Amos as a red herring and then check out the Hound of the Baskervilles bathroom. I guess we're back in the movie and here's a biology class where the teacher attempts to murder a student. Because if inhaled, these vapors can produce quite an adverse reaction. <laughs> New student Susan arrives and after class, Donnie gets this pep talk. You're a freak of nature, Porter. Much like that dodo bird. Too weak. Too stupid. Too ignorant to survive. Then Birnbaum makes a move to molest the new student. Oh, it's the other woman. Here's a frog dissection cliche that's immediately paid off that night when there's a human dissection to a totally 80s soundtrack. Kalima! Here, eat this. Kali continues to feel apprehensive and we get a bit of a plot twist with the principal. Where'd you get this? Hmm? Oh, that's my daughter, Kathy. Then Arthur has this big reveal. Long time ago, I went to this high school. That night, Blake and Kali finally get it on. Blake wakes up to squeaking, Kali wakes up to loneliness, and hey, it's Kmart Michael Myers. <laughs> you just got your new side piece killed. That door is cardboard. Kali runs to the car to find Amos and... Yes, great, Callie. That was perfect. Ah, oh, it's only a movie. <laughs> Callie! Ah, oh, it's only a dream. They search the school, finding a shitload of evidence, making me wonder why they just don't call the fucking cops. I gotta call the police. No. If we take the time to get help, then the son of a bitch could get away. What kind of logic is that? They discover the secret sandbox entrance and go on down, but they lose their gun and the flashlight. Dumbasses. They find a secret passage and what the fuck is this? There's one chair left. Huh? It's for you. <laughs> Wait, it is Amos? Holy shit! There's some fighting and we find out that Castleman has always been Amos, making me wonder if this guy was getting two paychecks. He takes Kali hostage and reveals the truth about Kathy. Yes, yes, you did. So much so that she got pregnant. And she had to give herself an abortion. I fucking knew it. This whole thing turns into a shotgun wedding with Kali as the maid of honor. But Blake fucking leaves. Where, where are you going? Home. What? It's uh, Monday Night Football. You can't, you can't do that. This is how the movie should end. <laughs> well, that ending will work too. Arthur leads the cops to the sandbox and heads back outside. All clear. All right, let's move. We're out of here in 30 seconds. What? So it was all bullshit? <laughs> I didn't know it was going to work until Callie and Blake discovered that Castleman was the real killer. Do you know how much publicity this is going to generate? Okay, so the principal plot happened and they just milked it for all it's worth. The police enter the hidden classroom. Bullshit. No one notices this? Yeah. 
Are you sure? The cops step back outside and... You are all horrible at your job. And Arthur gets his inspiration from his dad's glamour shot. They didn't want the truth. But they'll be back. They always do sequels. Sequels? Not of this one. Dad. Return to Horror High is kind of like Inception if Inception was a mess. There are layers on top of layers, and you have no idea what's going on. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but my feeling is, it's fucking bad. So they're shooting a movie about a real event, and everything going on is fake, except the ending, which, with the principal, is real? Everyone's alive? So how did we get to this ending? It's confusing as hell. There's a little slashing and a few funny bits, which is fine because you're not supposed to take the film seriously. It's not great, but it's a nice relic of the era. We gotta see your tits. Are they in the picture? <laughs> 